Hey guys, this is Bandit Guy 4 with another bonus part of Pokemon Fire Red. This time I'm on Seven Island, the only one that I didn't visit in the main adventure. And this is the Quest Island of Infinity. There are many very powerful trainers on this island, but I've already battled all of them off screen. If you head north out of town, there is a trainer tower up here. And this area is. Um. Kind of like uh, the Battle Frontier or Battle Towers in other games. And I guess I'll show off a little bit of it. You can battle up the floors, and I will say yes. And there are different types. You can do single battles, double battles. Um, let me see if I can figure out what those other types of battles are. Because I'm not exactly sure. Mixed, of course, mixes up the... Um, different types of battles. And I'll do a knockout battle because I don't know which one that one is. Oh wait, I think it's a one-on-one -on -one type of thing. So you're timed while doing this. You just have to go through here. And uh, you have to battle uh, each of these trainers one at a time using only uh, one Pokemon, so I'll be stuck using Jupiter first each time. And, of course, you don't get any experience, so I don't do this real often, because I like to get experience when I do stuff. And I prefer the style of the Battle Frontier in other games more anyway. But, what is worth noting in this tower is that uh, there are shiny Pokemon held by a lot of the trainers here. So if you've never seen a shiny besides the red Gyarados that's stand the first shiny that most people see, you can come here and see, I know there's a shiny Seeking, uh, it's the one that pops into my mind first. And there are several other shiny Pokemon here. I think the only thing you actually get for doing this is a star on your trainer card. Uh, you might get some items as well. I'm looking it up right now actually because I've totally forgotten since I never do this. Okay, so this tells you that um, let's see this mentions that you see uh, three shiny Pokemon while battling here. There is a uh, shiny Seeking which I already mentioned. There is a shiny Espeon and a shiny Meowth. And this, those are all very nice to see. Um, I think you get certain items for yes. Uh, the, there's the single battle tower, which if you it's just one on one battles, and you get an upgrade for beating that. Which if you trade while Porygon is holding it, it will evolve to Porygon too. There's a double mode featuring double battles. If you eat that, you get the Dragon Scale, which if you trade while Cedra is holding it, it will evolve into Kingdra. This knockout mode that I'm doing right now, if you beat it, you receive a Metal Code, which if Onyx is holding it in his trade, it evolves to Steelix. If Scyther is holding it in his trade, it evolves into Scizor. And then there's the uh, Mixed Mode, which is a combination of the three regular other modes. And if you clear that within the time, you receive a King's Rock, which if Slowpoke is holding it and you evolve it, it becomes the Slow King. It also increases the chance of flinching. But I didn't actually want to do this trainer tower. I was just doing that battle so that I had time to explain what you get for doing it. But to be honest, I don't really see the point because you can get all those items anyway and you don't get any experience, so I'm not a big fan of the tower at all. However, in the Japanese version, if you had an e-reader, you could use that and uh, modify the trainers you can battle. But since I've never made it to the US, it stays the same no matter what you do. What's more interesting is south, you enter the canyon entrance of Savolt Canyon. And the trainers here are exceptionally strong uh, Pokemon, all in the 
uh, 50s level range, lower 50s, and the wild Pokemon are up near that level too. I'm just gonna get away from this battle. But there is more than just the trainers here, as I will get to soon. Here's the canyon itself. And yet more grass, yet more trainers, and there's another battle. And the Jodo Pokemon that you find are much lower level, but I'm not interested in catching a fan here at the moment. Here's some grass that you can't avoid. Well, actually, I need to go through here. Here's the main point of this area. This is Tanabe Key, and the point of this room, you have to push one of the boulders into each hole. And let's see if I can figure this out. I've never actually attempted this. In my original playthrough of Fire Red, I didn't get to this point, actually. So I think I'm gonna have to hop down here to get those in. And I honestly have no idea. No, I did this wrong. Um, yes I did. Let's see if I can figure that out properly this time. I still think that I have to push this one straight forward and those other two into uh, the side holes. But I think I need to get um, these out of the way first and then push them up into these holes. And then I can uh, push each of these once at a time into their proper slot. No, I need to do that before I block off this area. Wow, okay. Um, I think I got it this time, hopefully. With any luck whatsoever. Actually, I don't think I even need luck, I just need to not be stupid about it. So I was correct all along about this one. It goes straight up. Now this time I'll do these ones into their spots. Now I can push this. I was wrong again, I think. How am I supposed to do this? Of course. Hey, guess what? I'm stupid. So... Very simply, what I need to do is, it seems simple to push these boulders right next to this one into the middle. What you actually have to do is go around, and that will allow you to get these into these holes up here, rather than um, try and get one of the bottom ones up to the top. And now I guess it really doesn't matter how I do this, but I'll uh, do it the same way I had been, getting those in there. And it's interesting because solving this puzzle is going to do something that I'm not even going to bother to show. But I figured I'd show the solution to the puzzle, at, le at the very least. So, once you've completed that, you hear an echo far away. So now I need to continue through the rest of the canyon, which I've also been through still. So. Um, if you're... Yeah, another random battle. Marowak's awesome, but I'm not interested in battling Marowak right now. So you can go around the bottom, battle that trainer and get an item, or if you're just running through this area for a second time like I am, you can just smash the rock there. This is the guy who tells you about uh, Bruno training with Brawly, so if you're wondering where that guy is. And then just keep down here, there's this pretty simple puzzle there to get an item. It's not terribly difficult to find out. Uh, when you've made it all the way through this area, uh, battling the trainers, and undoubtedly getting your Pokemon pretty low health, you can come into this house here. There's a lucky punch sitting on the table, table if it's your first time here, which increases the critical hit ratio of Chansey's attacks. And this person is doing a little dance, and he asks you to do the dance with him, and if you choose to do so, your character will dance. 
and then you'll heal the theme to indicate that all your Pokemon are being healed. So that's very important if you're training in this area to pay attention to that house. And then, what does this say? Kenobi Ruins Ahead. So, as you might guess by the name being the same, the Kenobi Key activated something here in the Kenobi Ruins. And do I have repels? Yes, I do. So there are some trainers out here, but there are also uh, various ruins, and I'll just head into one for a moment. Uh, each chamber is named something different, and there are diff well, technically different Pokemon in each of them. Let's see. Well, I have a repel up, so I'm not going to encounter one right now. That's foolish. Ruins. There we go. The repel wore off, so. Now I can get into a battle, and this is the location of the unknown in this game. And they do have all 28 unknowns, every letter A through Z, and the question mark and exclamation point. Now I don't actually want a unknown, so I'm going to go ahead and exit this chamber. And I believe there's something about why each of these are named the way they are. There are hard scales in and around these islands, which I guess is not really important to mention because hard scales aren't what you learn to use to relearn moves in this game. But one of the guys around here will tell you that uh, the ruins have been around for nearly 1500 years here. Anyway, I don't know why the chambers are called what they are. If you, do, if you know, please post me a comment so that I can find out. That. But as it is, I know nothing about what's going on here. So, even though it's called the Sevi Islands, there are in fact nine islands, two of which I cannot access, and neither can you unless you have a save file back from when Nintendo was doing events. There is Naval Rock, Eight Island, and if you had a mystic ticket through the mystery gift, you could uh, go to Naval Rock. And if you go to the lowest floor, you can find Lugia. If you go to the top floor, you can find Ho-Oh. But you cannot get them. And then there is also Birth Island, which, like Naval Rock, is only possible through an event. And you can find Deoxys there. But, again, not possible. But that's going to be all for this part. So, I will have another bonus part coming soon. And I will see you guys then.